I greet you, dear brethren, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How are you? I hope the Lord has been with you and uh, you are fine in the Lord. And um, today is another day, a new day that the Lord has given unto us, and we should rejoice and uh, be glad in, in, in it. It being a preparation day, we want to thank God for the six days that He has been with us. This is the sixth day, and the Sabbath is nearing. What a joy! Um, that is in our hearts as we await to welcome the Sabbath and to rest in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to have a communion with Him and also to commune with Him and to hear from His throne. It is a joy. Today we are in day 71 of our 100 days of prayer and I know that we have had a good experience. The Lord has been with us. We have been uh, putting forward our request unto Him. We have been praying to him and he has been listening unto us. He has been answering our prayers in different ways. And we want to th thank him and we want to glorify his name. I would like to welcome you into our today's program. And uh, the, the program of today is entitled, When a Storm Catches You by Surprise. When a Storm Catches You by Surprise. What do you do when such kind of uh, as, uh, a thing comes in your uh, way. And today's key verse is from the book of Isaiah 26, verse 3 to 4. Isaiah 26, verse 3 to 4. But before we read the word, let us invite heaven so that uh, the Holy Spirit can interpret the word for us. Shall we pray? Our kind and loving master in heaven, we come before thy throne of grace this moment with thanksgiving filled in our hearts. We thank you for the grace and mercies that you have bestowed upon our lives. And that's why we are breathing today. We can't take that for granted. But what we can do is just to thank you and to glorify your name. At this moment, O Jehovah God, we invoke thy holy presence to abide with us. As we read your word, we pray for him to interpret for us. And when he interprets it, O Jehovah God, may we understand it and keep it in our hearts. And not only keep it, but Father, do as in accordance to thy will. We thank you because you are gracious. You have been with us in the last uh, past 70 days. And today in our 71st day of our 100 days of prayer, we also want to co come before thy throne of grace. And we want to continue to tarry there because our burdens are, are lifted there. And Jehovah God, you have promised to take care of them. Be with us and be with my viewer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 26, verse 3 to 4, I will read, I'm reading the New King James Version. I would request you to read in your own version. The Bible says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in your the Lord is everlasting, is everlasting strength. I will read again. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you, trust in the Lord forever, for in ya the Lord is everlasting strength. Dear brethren, today we are looking at when storm catches you unawares. And what would you do when something comes that you did not expect? What is your reaction? And this is in the aspect of the nearness of Jesus Christ. We are seeing things unveiling. Prophecies are being fulfilled. A lot of things that were prophesied by Jesus, a lot of things that were prophesied by the disciples, or the things that were prophesied by the prophets of God, like Daniel, like John, are being revealed and indeed we can see things are unfolding, things that we did not expect to unfold. In these times they are unfolding and these are all signs that are showing us that indeed the coming of the Son of Man is nearing. When something comes without your expectation, what would you do? I will tell you what we do or what uh, as human beings we usually do when things come on our way, things that we did not expect. I will tell you what we usually do. We pray. As Christians, 
We kneel down, we ask God to be with us and we ask God to intervene. That is what we usually do. But if our faith is less, sometimes we, we start by seeking friends to help us. We start by looking uh, to, the, to high top, top officials, government, and we start asking those we know uh, that they should come on our aid. But as a Christian, what is expected of us is to lift up our voices to God and to ask him to, for, to, 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 to come on our aid. God, we recognize that God is in control even when crazy things happen. And then we get up and keep going. That is what uh, we, we are used to. When maybe something comes on our way, maybe we, we have had an accident. It, we did not expect that accident. What we do? We just pray. And if we are hurt, we go to hospitals, we ask God to heal us, and we are healed, and we continue with our, with our, with our lives. When it is storm that has come and have destroyed our plans, have destroyed everything that we had, have destroyed our houses, what we do? Next day, we continue with our work, we try to renovate what has been destroyed, and we go on. If it, it is plants that we had planted and they have been destroyed, next day or next time, next season, we plant again and, life's go, and life goes on. When life comes crashing down around us, we have got to get up and, be, and rebuild it. The storms of life may knock us down, but we have got to reach out to the strength of God and move forward. For us, our greenhouse, um, uh, for us, or for, for the other is saying that it, it came a point when they were caught unawares. There was, they had greenhouses because they were farmers. They had greenhouses. And when the storm came on their way, there was a hurricane on their, on their country. And when the storm came, it destroyed the greenhouse. And they had to rebuild it again and also to prepare themselves for another storm. They had to put in measures so that when another storm comes, it will not, hurt, uh, it will not hit them as hard as it did at the first time. Let me say this. When storms of life come, we go to trust in the Lord. When there is mess in our lives, we don't have to give up. We have to trust in the law. In the law. What about the physical, emotional, spiritual, and economic storms created at this moment? I know each and every one of us is experiencing a storm in one way or another. Maybe it is in your workplace. Maybe it is in your, in, 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 in your family. Maybe it is in your business. Maybe it is uh, with uh, where you go to worship. There is a storm. We have been shaken, each and every one of us. The world, uh, the whole world has been shaken because of the pandemic that have come and have, 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 have uh, evaded the world. How are you responding to those storms? How are you responding to it? How will you rebuild your life again? Because maybe you have lost your livelihood. Your jobs, you have lost your job. Maybe you have lost your businesses. Uh, how will you rebuild? What lessons are you learning that will help prepare you for the future storms? Because we, we got to get up one, one way, uh, in one way or another. This COVID-19 is not ending. It is not coming to live. It will end at some point. But let me assure you that because we are nearing the close of the world's history, the book of Matthew 24 tells us that uh, uh, pandemics will come and they will go. Others will come. Tribulations will come in line. How, you, how are you preparing yourself for the future storms? When things happen that are outside of your control, where do you turn for strength and comfort? Jesus is our anchor. That is the good news that I want to bring today. That even if storms come unawares, when you are hit down by the things that are coming around you, Jesus is our anchor. He is there 
we can trust in him in him we can turn to him our prince of peace who can calm storms with a word from his lips we can turn to him to bring us through the storms of life and even through the end times will you trust him today remember the disciples when they were going through uh, the, 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 the 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 lake and they were crossing and what happened Boom, there was a storm and they started crying. Even they did not cry to the Lord. They started helping themselves, trying to remove the water that was, had, had uh, gotten into the boats. They had forgotten that the Savior is with them. But when they realized that Jesus was with them, they cried unto him, Master, we are perishing. We are perishing. Why are you sleeping? When, well, we are perishing. And when Jesus came out of his sleep, he just said one word, peace be still, and the storms were cooled. Let me tell you good news today. The moment you realize that Jesus is in your life, the moment you realize him, when you are passing through the tribulations, just tell him that you are in need of him, and he will cool the storms that will have evaded you. Brethren, the scripture today is telling us that you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is everlasting Lord. The only person who can keep us unstumbled is Jesus Christ. The only person who can keep us unshaken is Jesus Christ. Trust him today. Trust that Lord because he will take care of you today. How have you reacted to the worldwide pandemic today? That is a question that you should ask yourself. If you are filled with fear, it is a high time that you remember Jesus. It is a high time that you call upon his name and he will uphold you. He will carry you with his own hands and he will take you to the place where he wants you to be. Today I want to challenge you. Ask God to show you any areas of your life where you might have not given him full access to. Anything you might be willing, unwilling to give up control over. Ask him to forgive you and to help you trust in him. Maybe this pandemic crisis has revealed to you some things in your life where you have been lacking to exercise faith. Pray to our loving Jesus to help you to surrender all to him and to, lean, to learn to trust in him despite the storms of life. That is the challenge that I want to leave with you today. If you did not trust in Jesus Christ fully, trust him today. If you did not entrust your life to Jesus, entrust your life today. And you will not be the same again. Jesus will cover you. Jesus will hide you under his wings. And you will be saved evermore. May God bless you. And may God be with you. May he shield you. And may he protect you. And as you look forward to rebuild your business again. As you look forward to rekindle your life again. Because this pandemic has destroyed it. I pray that may you let Jesus do it for you. Because when you let Jesus do it for you, it will not be like the human being. We have an anchor that holds us strong. And that anchor is in Jesus Christ. He is our everlasting Father. He is there with us. He is our Savior. And He is ready to be with you. May God bless you, my dear viewer. And I pray that whatever circumstance that you are passing through, remember, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Lift those circumstances to the Lord. And the Lord will bless you. He will keep you safe. And He will redeem you. May God bless you. Let us get into a session of prayer. And as we pray, I pray that you submit your cares unto the Lord in faith. And when you do that, he will remember you and he will do what is in accordance to thy will. It is in Jesus' name I'm praying for you that way. Uh, let us humble ourselves wherever you are. Take some position, the posture that you would like to, uh, to take so that we can pray at this moment and submit our request to the Lord. Shall we pray? Our loving master in heaven, we are grateful and thankful for the word that has come from thy scriptures. You have given us a beautiful testimony, a beautiful 
experience and that beautiful promise that even if we pass through difficulties, you will come in handy for our rescue. You have promised us in the book of Isaiah that those who trust in you, you are always with them and you are there to solve their problems. And that's why, Father, we trust in you and we call upon your name at this moment. We request you that may you come in for us and may you help us, O Jehovah God. This pandemic has caused a lot of harm to us. It is a storm that we did not expect and it has destroyed our businesses. It has destroyed our livelihoods. Jehovah God, we don't have anywhere else to run to. We just have you and we request you that may you come on our aid and may you come to heal us. Come and visit us in a special way. Come and, uh, Father, return what the devil has taken. And, Father, at the end of it all, put the wa your words in our mouths, the words of praises. And may we remember to praise you and to give you glory and honor because you are the one who would have reformed us. You are the one who would have recreated us. And you are the one who would have regained what we have lost, O Jehovah God. We remember our country. May you remember us in, in a special way. Jehovah God, this country is going through thin and, and uh, difficulties. Father, may you remember our president. May you remember the health uh, uh, department, O Jehovah God. May you remember those who are sick, those who are in the forefront to fight this disease. Remember them, O Jehovah God. Protect them. And those who are sick, visit them wherever they are and heal them in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We remember those who do not have food on their tables. Provide for them. We remember those who have lost their jobs. May you, Father, remember them in a special way. And my dear viewer has posted some prayer requests before thy throne of grace, Jehovah God. Do not pass, them, uh, pass him or her by. But, Father, remember him and answer those prayers that he has posted in a special way. And, and, and uh, Jehovah God, we pray that most of all, may you continue preparing us for your second coming. For indeed, it is very near than we believed, uh, than the time we believed. I know your second coming is very near. The Jehovah God, you are almost coming because the signs have shown us that indeed your coming is near. The signs, the, 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 the prophecies are being fulfilled. And Jehovah God, we are just waiting for the gospel to spread around the world. And then your coming will come. Thank you because you are faithful and you have heard our prayers. Continue being with us and continue being with my dear viewer. It is in that mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we have prayed and given thanks. Amen and amen. May God bless you, my dear viewer. May he shower you with his blessings. And remember to share this message with your brothers and with your friends so that they can be blessed the same way you have been blessed. God bless you.